Hello there commanders and welcome to another Total War Arena news update and that update comes from the developers themselves in the form of developer log number 2. Now I don't think that is just number 2 because I recall uh, several other messages in such manner but well maybe they just were counted as regular news updates right now developer logs or maybe they have been counted from September since the release of the game right and from March from the first Pioneer test. Even if they were counted from September I think they would still be more than just 2. Doesn't really matter. Speaking of releasing, this post has been published on 12th of April and now we have 24th of April, so why the delay? Well, shortly after this developer log, I think maybe a day, I don't really re remember now, um, well, a patch was released as well that directly corresponded to what is being uh, addressed in this uh, developer log, so I thought I'm going to play through that patch myself uh, through several time zones to be able to provide more insightful commentary and feedback on the matter of matchmaking, which is what is mainly discussed here and what the entire patch was about. So now let's get into the message itself. I know what you see here is actually the original English message translated into Chinese by Netis and then back into English by Google. So. You can pause and read it if you want and see how the Google did, especially since we rely on Google for uh, all the other translations where the original English message isn't attached, but luckily for us, this time around, the original English message is right here. And please excuse my inability to speak English. I've been recording videos pretty much all day. Um, so yeah, I may stutter here or there. So please be... Um, <laughs> Exactly, please be respectful of that, please be, please excuse me. Yep, yeah, see, I, I'm already lacking the vocabulary, my brain just doesn't work anymore. Anyway, I hopefully can still read, so let's go. We love Arena and its community. Since the release in China in September 2020, you keep providing us with valuable feedback and show great enthusiasm online. Thank you and keep it coming. It's great to read your opinions on forum and other channels. They are very inspiring and we want to listen not only to the loudest voices, but everyone who enjoys clashing virtual spears and shields like we do. So, okay, let's pause here and let me tell you, I definitely don't envy the person or maybe a team of people um, the, whose job is to agglomerate the feedback of the community and then rely it further onto the rest of the developer team. Because being in a similar position and myself as a YouTuber um, who has uh, Total War Arena Focus Discord and leads a Total War Arena clan and also is a Praetorian on hiatus, I guess. Yeah, let's keep that. Uh, Praetorian hiatus. Um, not of my own will. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm in a very similar situation, right? Mine is the relying the feedback onto the developers part, although I still do that, um, but just not as often, I guess. Uh, well, where well, I'm exposed to a lot of Total War Arena feedback, being in, uh, be it in my comment section or in the Sunsu Discord, or just talking to Sunsu members when I play with them, and a lot of those, uh, a lot of that feedback. Um, there are just very mixed messages, very often just straight up contradicting each other. And then you have to be very intelligent and smart about it, how you approach it, right? Uh, because you need to not only take that feedback at a face value, you also need to think why those people are saying what they're saying, right? And maybe what they're calling for is not necessarily going to be um, a solution to the underlying cause. Um, of why they're saying that thing in the first place. So for example, this is going to come in a future video um, about how to improve matchmaking that I'm writing a script for. Yes, that's uncommon for me, I know, but that one is quite important to me, so I want to make sure that I don't omit any of my points um, that have come to my mind at that point in time, um, like I can easily in this video, because I'm just going with the flow and speaking what comes to my mind at any given point in time. Um, and then after a video, it's like, ah, forgot to mention that cool thing. God damn it. Well, whatever, right? So I want to make sure that for important videos like that one, I am going to write a script and make sure that everything is in there. Whether it be a full script or just a list of points, it is going to be somewhat scripted. Uh, but anyway, let's get back on track. 
Um, so, one such example, right, is people calling for just remove the current game mode and go back to the previous game mode that we know from Wargaming and Steam, right? And need to analyze, hmm, why are they saying they don't like the current game mode? Why they don't like the current game mode? Well, they most often, often point towards the respawn, like it's oh, not hardcore enough or something, something. But then you need to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. I'm not going to do this in this video. Um, the next video uh, about improving watchmaking is going to be about that. Uh, but yeah, you need to dig deeper into it. Um, try to find the root cause of um, the problem that they're pointing to, or the actual problem um, that they're maybe not necessarily pointing to, and why they're proposing such a solution, such a drastic, radical solution, right? And maybe there is a, a different mm, solution that would be much uh, better and would still address their problems in actually a better way than they want it to be addressed, right? Um, so you need to be intelligent and smart in that way to be able to properly analyze it and um, come, by, come up with a good solution. And also at the same time, you need to be knowledgeable, well-versed, let's say, uh, in the game itself, right? So you can actually properly understand the feedback um, that you're reading and then want to rely on to the developers um, you know to, to be able to cross-reference what you're reading in the feedback with your own experiences and be able to tell um, the reasons why people are saying these things and what may be uh, true and what may be just a, an overreaction to something um, you know that's a very very difficult uh, job and yeah I hope CA has somebody who is competent enough to actually do that well um, okay, let's move onward one more thing that I wanted to address in that uh, paragraph is um, yes yeah, since the release in China in September 2020 you keep providing us with valuable feedback are you saying that we haven't been providing feedback uh, for the first pioneer tests <laughs> is that what you're implying CA well, I'm sure that's not what they meant, but still, you need to wa watch out on the wording, that's very important. Anyway, let's continue onward. On 11th of March, we held our breaths and rolled out the biggest experiment ever. Players can now play 8v8 battles against AI with tier 1 to 3 units, and 10 vs 10 battles against other players with tier 3 to 10 units. We also rebalanced every unit to minimize gap between tiers and help every player make an impact on the battlefield. The experiment is still ongoing, so we want to share some thoughts and first results with you. Um, so yeah, about the rebalancing every unit and minimizing the gap so that every player can make an impact on the battlefield... Well, that's just sadly not true. Um, a tier 3 well, versus tier 10, that's, I know that's the most extreme example, but even if you change it to tier 5 versus tier 7 or 8, the gap is still huge, and it comes not only from the changes, uh, sort of differences in uh, the base raw stats of the unit, which yes, they have been nerfed and compressed, let's say, to be closer amongst the tiers, um, but still there are huge gaps and differences coming from um, the number and the type of unit skills available. Uh, especially on tier 9 and 10, you have ability swapping, where you can pick from a very wide range of unit abilities and pick, you know, the most optimal combo for your playstyle. You also have consumables. Uh, from tier 7, you have two consumables available. Before that, it's just one, which also makes uh, a difference. Sometimes a big one, sometimes not as much. But still, that is another uh, factor. And then also, mainly, I think, commander abilities, um, which the highest tier of the commander unit you have, the more talent points you can spend and the more advanced fancy upgrades uh, to your um, commander abilities you can get. And that really makes the gap still very, very huge. And there's also an issue that in vast majority of cases, the tier 3 player, I know this is the most extreme example, but whatever, just... Imagine just low tier player versus high tier player, right? The low tier player is usually going to be much less experienced than the high tier player. Obviously, there are cases where a player who has already unlocked and is experienced um, and goes to unlock a new branch, a new commander, and just grinds up. But that is a minority of cases that really don't need to be addressed because, well, they just grind through again it. Uh, again, through it, maybe be a little bit frustrated there, but they'll 
they'll deal with it, right? But for a new player that comes in, in a tier 3, tier 45 unit, and then faces tier 8, 9, 10, and gets wrecked every single time, that's not a very good experience, and you may cause him to quit the game because of that. Um, so yeah, that still uh, definitely is an issue, and that means that such a solution, I already said that uh, in the past when I was doing uh, the patch notes uh, video for patch that introduced it. Was that even a patch or just like a matchmaking update in the game? Anyway, I did a video and said that needs to be a temporary solution uh, because I can totally see why they're doing it and I agree with the core principle behind it, but it needs to be temporary, a band-aid solution that then changes the pers uh, perception of the community um, of the matchmaking, acts somewhat as a placebo effect maybe, and then uh, go back to what it was before, find some new iteration. But anyway, let's uh, continue uh, reading onward. Why? Matchmaking time is currently the biggest challenge we are all facing. Although there are some solutions being prepared for it, well, since we are 12 days in the future, we already know what those solutions are, at least so far. Um, uh, it will take a few more weeks, took a day, <laughs> but maybe the, uh, the developer log also has been delayed. A few more weeks before we introduce them or maybe there's something more coming we wanted to make the situation better quickly even if it was not going to be perfect yes there is a trade-off obviously uh, arena was designed as a team multiplayer pvp game and we want to focus on delivering the best possible experience in this mode we think that it's better to have less balanced battle than no battle at all with that in mind we decided to go all in uh, and make the change drastic to see the best or worst result possible and yeah, I agree with them, right? It needed to be drastic, and it was drastic. Um, and it definitely had a positive impact overall, but it comes at a price of frustrating the newer players and just having less balanced battles. Uh, we'll get into that later, I imagine. Um, PvE is a useful addition to the game, but it should not be seen as a replacement of PvP. Its purpose is to help onboard new players and create a safe, safe environment to learn, test, and have casual fun. Well, so now they realize it now, but then maybe explain yourselves why was tier 10 PvP a thing for such a long time after the release. Um, yeah, well, they really needed to own up to that mistake. Uh, yeah. Now we are in a situation we are in, partially for that reason. <clears throat> but yeah, at least at least they're trying. I'll give them that. At least they're trying uh, to correct their mistakes. Anyway, I do have a phone call right now, so I'm going to pause the recording and come back to you in a in a blink for you. So I'm back. Sorry for um, the blink. I guess. Um, yeah. So. Why was the tier 10 PvE a thing for such a long time? Yeah, they, they are owning up their mistakes. Finally, took them a while. And yes, we need to acknowledge that the damage has been done. And now the effort needs to be put in to undo the damage. But some of it may be beyond saving. So it needs to be even more additional effort to make up for it. But well, let's continue onward as I try to get back on track. What happened? What happened? Yeah, just what happened. Not what happened next. Um, but I guess it was next. We know that for many of you it was a shock and some of you were unhappy with this temporal change, but overall it has positive effect on the game. The average waiting time in PvP dropped by 44% and in PvE by 20%. Average number of daily PvP battles tripled in comparison to week before, while number of daily PvE battles halved. When you consider that PvP in PvP both teams consist of players, you can see that the change positively affected large part of the community. We decided to keep the experiment running until we introduce more ways to help with matchmaking, including inviting more new players to join the battle. As soon as it will be possible, we want to reintroduce battle tiers and work on balancing the game. Okay, uh, quickly, as soon as it will be possible, we want to work on balancing the game. Are you saying that you're not working on balancing the game right now? I mean, the last patch would kind of be the proof of it, right? 4.16, I mean. 
where there were no balance changes and just matchmaking changes. So, yeah, please work on balancing the game because it also contributes to people quitting the game when they see the Blonita's bullshit, you know? J just saying. Or other imbalanced uh, units and commander combos that just leads to frustration. So, yeah, yeah I think you need to address that as well. Um, alongside of matchmaking changes, I don't believe that you have just a few people that can only do one or the other and not both. That should be separate people uh, responsible for those things. Uh, but anyway, I don't know what's in there in their team. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we want to reintroduce battle tiers, so tier banding essentially. That was the nomenclature they were always using, why are they not using it anymore? But anyway, obviously, right? They want to divide the queue again into tier brackets, essentially. That's what tier banding is, tier, tier band is. Um, so, yeah, that definitely needs to come back. And I'm kind of surprised that it hasn't come back yet. Maybe they don't feel like the um, EVP population is high enough for that yet. And they want to increase it. We've seen an increase in the number of people that are playing. Thanks to the safety net that AI, the introduction of AI, um, introduced. But... Or maybe let's just read what's next and then I'll just provide closing thoughts, although that may be quite a lot of them. Um, and I'll try to make sure I say everything I want to, but again, I'm just running it down YOLO style. Um, so maybe I'll pause a video, think about it and make sure I do mention everything I want to mention. Could have written things down on a piece of paper, but I was like, let's go. What's next? We keep working on shortening the matchmaking time with other updates, uh, while other updates will be coming in the meantime. Unfortunately, we can't share a full roadmap for the whole year, as it's still very flexible and may change in many ways. What I can share though is that there is a new exciting branch of units coming to the Chinese faction, and we will publish a separate blog entry about it soon. Further down the line, there's an entire new faction waiting to be released and shed blood of their enemies. These warriors will bring two new legendary commanders and multiple units with unique mechanics into the battlefields. Thank you for all the support and see you in the arena, commanders. Now that's a very similar outro to mine, so maybe they have been inspired by me. If so, I humbled. I'm honored. Um, yeah, just a funny thing to point out. <laughs> um, maybe just a pure coincidence after all, it's quite a generic way of saying see you or goodbye i don't know um but anyway new faction coming huh hmm, i wonder what that could be hmm, possibly possibly run um, rhymes with um berger any guesses oh well, maybe it's something else maybe it's gladiators maybe it's japan maybe it's aztecs vikings something else entirely well, let me know your thoughts in the comments what your bets are as to what that faction is. I do have my favorite, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, before we get that though, we get a new Chinese um, branch. Um, so I wonder what that could be. Um, now recalling back to Three Kingdoms, um, hopefully not artillery, they did have their trebuchets, so please don't. Um, they also had archers, but archers are already in two other factions, so I don't really see a need to introduce those, plus they have crossbows already and repeating crossbows. Um, so what I could see is either axe infantry or maybe axe cavalry, or just axe and sword cavalry branch. Um, that would be interesting, uh, especially since they have multiple commanders that work with uh, work well with infantry and cavalry. Well, after all, they have seven commanders, the most out of any faction by far, actually. Um, by three, to be exact. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be true pretty much for every single unit type other than ranged, I guess. Um, but even then, you can make arguments for that as well. Um, so yeah, my guesses would be Axe Infantry or Axe Cavalry. You already have two, three infantry branches, only one cavalry branch. So I would say cavalry branch would be more likely to have shock cavalry well it's not even shock that's a subject for another video definitely in the future i already made 
um, forum posts about that in the past on Steam, who hasn't been introduced. Um, even though I kept reading that feedback, but mm, I guess they just don't agree with me. <clears throat> so yeah, you would have, well, Spear Cavalry and Sword Axe Cavalry next to each other, which are essentially the same, which is my problem with the Cavalry classification, because it's really not much of a difference between Spear and Sword and possibly Axe Cavalry. There's a difference between the weight and the shock, like proper shock with lances, Cavalry and other types, but other than that, there's not real distinction. And there's really no point of them having a spear or sword where they all plays the same. Uh, but maybe I'm just noob and I'm completely wrong. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, but yeah, good luck with that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's go back into the matchmaking. Now that we have AI, um, it has probably that sort of safety net, some kind of a placebo effect, it's, although it's not entirely placebo because it's actually real. Um, but I think it helped as well because now that you have that safety net of having a guarantee that you will always find a battle no matter what no matter when at what time you play um, then that causes you to well just enter matchmaking right and then that causes more people to enter matchmaking and they just find 10v10 pvp battles uh, without the help of bots just that change of mentality in players that if you queue up, you are guaranteed to find a battle, and you're most likely, um, more likely to find it quickly. That just causes more people to play, and then achieve that effect, uh, but without the aid of AI. The, the AI just being there in the background, ready to step in if needed, if necessary. But it turns out that for majority of the 24-hour cycle, it's not necessary, and you get 10v10 battles from in terms of gmt uh, from very early morning to very late night and there's only maybe four five hour gap that is the middle of the chinese night and uh, north american prime time that has the issue of not being able to find 10 v 10 battles but other than that you're you're getting 10 v 10s all the time and if not then it's like 9 v 9 av 10 7 v 7 at most but very early less than that. Um, so yeah, that's something very interesting to observe. And um, well, that's something I've been fighting for, um, you know, for a very long time, trying to change the mentality of the um, arena players. The guys, just queue up. If like, if you all queue up, the matchmaking problems that have made you quit the game in the first place are going to disappear, right? But I just have so much power, so little power as a minor YouTube content creator um, and minor influencer, let's say, uh, within the Arena community. And that was just not enough. It has to come from the developers themselves, right? And finally, it has come from them. So good job on them for finally doing that. It took them a while. Could have been sooner, much sooner, but, well, better later than ever, right? So points for them for finally doing it um, and realizing what's going on. And that now is powerful enough to start reversing that mentality. But again, it might have been too late and some people who have already given up on the game and stopped playing, stopped enjoying it for matchmaking reasons may never return and not feed back into improving matchmaking. But again, I'll make a longer video about improving matchmaking in the future. That's coming once I write a script for it or just a bullet, uh, list of bullet points. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, let's not dive too deep into it. I'm just glad that those changes came. And now with the introduction of AI, um, they could just reintroduce tier bands to remove the problems of having tier 3 versus tier 10s. But then, if the population is not high enough, would introduce um, more AI players per team. And I think we can do that, even right now, if... I mean, not even if, because I think that needs to happen regardless of the tier banding being introduced or not. It just needs to happen. Um, but that will definitely help with enabling tier bands again. And what I'm talking about is bringing back um, the old iteration of AI into PvP. It can stay as it is uh, right now in PvE, nobody really cares there. Um, but, or maybe it's even better, right? Uh, but whatever, we're talking about PvP here. 
but in PvP, it feels really bad to uh, just lose battles because of bots or just not having a challenge. But the gap, like, we've been talking about the gap between tier 10 and tier 3 units, or just high tier and low tier units. And the same gap exists when bots are introduced in the current form, where the AI is just very, very bad, very dumb. And they did that on purpose, because the previous duration of AI that uh, was in Pioneer Test number 1 was actually pretty good, and I think it needs to be brought back into PvP. And I've been saying that long before uh, we started experimenting with matchmaking, right? Because AI in PvP battles still existed if somebody disconnected. And then, as it is right now, if somebody disconnects, um, then it's being taken over by the damp AI and you're essentially playing 9v10. And I do have a few good examples of battles where uh, just by the fact it's being 9 versus 10 and the skill difference between both teams is not high enough to really compensate for the lack of um, that one player, it is extremely difficult to compensate for just lack of one player because, well, it's technically still on the battlefield, but that AI will just sit in the base or, if you're lucky, on top of a point and just do nothing unless somebody runs directly into it. Um, so yeah, or if a player disconnects somewhere in the middle of the battlefield, the AI will just glitch out and have no idea what to do and just stand there and do nothing. That's all, like in the middle of nowhere. So that's definitely not good either. And you are essentially playing 9v10. And if we were to bring back the old AI, the somewhat competent AI, um, you would get, um, let's say, 9.5 versus 10. I think an average player um, that is that has gotten some PvP experience uh, will be better than AI, and even if they're not better than that AI, um, that's still something that you expect you're ready for when you go into PvP matchmaking, that some players, or maybe in this case bots, right, are going to be better than you, right, and then that's something normal and not harmful in any way, really, I think, at least. Uh, in PvP, if you really have that situation where new players are coming in, they're l trying to learn the game and the bots are crashing them, um, that's not really helpful to help them learn. And that's also um, may damage their self-esteem and may just, oh, stupid game, I can't even win against bots, I'm quitting, right? So I understand the changes that they made to AI, but they needed to separate it between PvP and PvE, but they didn't. Um, which now causes the issue that if AI is present in PvP battles, it ruins them. And now we have AI battles, uh, or PvP battles with AI in them much more often uh, because of the matchmaking changes. So they definitely need to take steps. Like now they have the perfect excuse to touch and change the AI in PvP uh, because of the newest patch, right? So bring it back, I think it won't be damaging to people's perception and definitely make it better. Uh, because if you take some extreme examples, um, if you remember the battle that I showed in my patch notes video, uh, that's quite an extreme example, that was the first day as well of the patch where there were just... Um, well, the algorithm hasn't been changed yet, and it would just keep pumping out battles just full of AI, uh, just as soon as possible. As Somebody queues, give them a battle, give them a battle instead of waiting a little bit more for more players. Um, so yeah. Uh, but there was a battle like that um, where just randomly, right? Because it randomly gives units to bots and randomly deploys them on the battlefield. And it just so happened that one team had six ranged units, AI ranged units, camping at a point in a blob. And then the enemy team had a human cavalry player and just went around, first thing he did in the battle, just went around, charged straight into that blob of six ranged units, obliterated them, back up the point, and the battle was over essentially from that point, from the very beginning. Alright, because there was only two other human players on the enemy team, and, well, they couldn't really do much to come back to that game. Um, well, you know, if they wanted to do the same, they were unlucky, because for the enemy team um, it was melee units camping at a point, which you cannot obliterate very quickly with a simple swift charge. Um, so yeah, well, unless you are Alexander in Wedge, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but uh, that's kind of been the point. Like, you have those battles um, that are purely decided in matchmaking and there's really nothing you can do unless there's a huge, huge difference in skill in both teams, which also shouldn't be the case ideally, right? But what I've noticed is that matchmaking is mainly prioritizing uh, tiers, so that the number of tiers, let's, if uh, one tier equals one point, right? So I want to equal that number of points across two teams, and only then the matchmaking looks at unit type composition, and maybe even not that, because I've seen battles where one team has five ranged players and the other team has only one ranged player and you know the same case with cavalry infantry etc um so if the battles like that are created they're very often one-sided and again just decided in matchmaking unless there's enough of a skill gap to compensate for it and when there isn't they're just one-sided stomps and yeah not very fun to play um, definitely for one of the sides and arguably for the other as well. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that issue is slightly created by the fact that now we have tier 3 to 10 matchmaking, right? Because the tier numbers are so all over the place that matchmaking kind of needs to prioritize them a little bit more um, or take them into account more uh, than it would previously. And well, then create such matchmaking farts. But not to be fully apologetic for and giving excuse to that matchmaking, even before that, uh, we had multiple instances of just having the 20 players that are in the battles, right? And the team compositions being completely unfair, but they could have been made much more even if you just swap two or three players around between the teams. Right? Just uh, take one ranged player from team A, give it to team B and in return give one melee player from team B to team A, and suddenly the match is much more fair, right? The same set of 20 players, just slightly swap them around uh, between teams, and the battle is much more equal, much more fair, and actually would come down to skill rather than lack of where you're being placed, which team you're placed in. Um, so yeah, not only that needs to be improved uh, as well, and now, we, since you have guarantee that you will always find battles across all tiers in all tier bands, you can just bring them back, right? And if um, AI would be made, um, well, um, <clears throat> pushed back to the iteration it had, it was in um, in Pioneer Test number one, then it wouldn't really be that big of a difference between the actual players. And it would just feel much more natural, much more, let's say, controlled environment. It would be up to the players to defend against backups, and then they would need to rely on AI to provide that front line. I mean, it's maybe not ideal, but it's definitely better than what we have now. Uh, not a perfect solution, but I still think it's pretty good. And hey, they can even improve the AI, um, make something like in between. AI is smart about um, defending the points and just leaves one or two melee units, make sure they are melee, but they leave that on the point and the rest are going to the front line. And you have, oh yeah, cool, AI is defending the point, so I can go and have fun on the front lines with all three of my units. Right? I'm pretty sure they could write something like that into the matchmaking algorithm. And definitely also one thing that needs to change um, is the units that the AI gets. Obviously, let them use commander abilities, because I don't know, the AI is just a uh, punching bag, which I don't think should be the case in PvP. PvE, sure, make it a punching bag, because that's that's the reason they are there. Uh, but in PvP, they shouldn't be just a punching bag, um, not to that degree anyway. Um, so yeah, and then once they can use commander abilities, make them actually use good commander and unit combos rather than just completely random where we have Lonidas Arches, right? And other similar stuff. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of improvement to be made, but I don't think that improvement would be necessarily difficult to introduce. Just add some ramifications as to what AI can bring, what they should bring, etc. And 
make sure the matchmaking, uh, the teams that matchmaking creates are much more even. And it should be much, much easier now, because if it's, a, let's say, a 5v5, five players on each team and five bots in each team, you have full control of half of the players in matchmaking, let's say, right? You can give them any uh, commander unit uh, combos that you need to make uh, the battles as equal, as even as possible in matchmaking. But instead, what matchmaking does right now is just farts out really, really bad matches quite often. Not always, but often enough for it to be a nuisance. Well, I have rambled in this video for 36 minutes. I think that's definitely long enough, but I needed to get it out of my system, let's say. So now that all, that all has been said, I'll say goodbye to you here. Wait for the upcoming uh, How to Improve Matchmaking video. Coming soon TM. Whenever it's ready, it will be out. No promises made, but it should be out. Um, unless I scrap it. But we'll see. So, until then, I will see you on Arena's Battlefields, Commanders.